Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. Today is certainly going to be a fun one. I have two of my besties that, well, (laughs) we don't really get to introductions because we're all so excited to be chatting about things. But my guests today on the podcast are the two amazing humans that I teach the Barco Workshop series with. I have Kaylee Greer from Dog Breath Photography and Charlotte Reeves from Charlotte Reeves Photography and Unleashed Education back on the podcast. And we are sharing all things memories and goals and future outlooks, just really all things Barca. So come along with us as we relive the past and look forward to the future and um, laugh a lot. (laughs) I apologize for all the laughter you're going to hear. Hopefully it's infectious and it brings a smile to your face too. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. If you're a pet photographer ready to make more money and start living a life by your design, you've come to the right place. And now, your host, pet photographer, travel addict, chocolate martini connoisseur, Nicole Begley. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Hair of the Dog podcast. I'm here with two of my besties. I got... Wow! Am I allowed to... Am I... Oh. Now you know who it is. I spoiled it. <laughs> I spoiled it. Hello. I'm so excited. Okay. All right. I'll shut up now. You go. You go. <laughs> oh, we also have Charlotte. Charlotte, go ahead. Say hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> if you haven't um, figured out the voices from previous episodes, we've got Kaylee Greer from Dog Breath, Charlotte Reeves from Charlotte Reeves Photography and Unleashed Education. <gasps> Welcome, ladies. Hello! I'm Thank so excited, you. Nicole. Glad I'm to so be excited here. to be here on the world famous Hair of the Dog podcast. Oh, I don't know about <laughs> How that. Yet? That's crazy town. <laughs> That's crazy town. So yeah, so you guys, uh, wow, I mean, where do we even start? We created something like pretty ridiculously special way back, taking you back in the time machine, 2016, April, show up at a Barcelona airport, never met you guys before. Kaylee, you were pretty easy to spot. Charlotte, I'm like, I think that's Charlotte. That must be Charlotte. That's got to be Charlotte. Okay. All right. And uh, yeah, magic was born. It It was. was. It was so magical. It was the wildest, wildest idea that you had. You said like, how about you meet me overseas? Let's go somewhere magical and exotic and special and totally out of this world. And let's go... Talk about dog photography. And I was like, I'm in. Are you serious? I'm in. So that was, um, God, 2016. That's why my knees are cracking now today. <laughs> because, <laughs> because every day that goes by, I'm aging and aging and aging. And my cartilage between my joints is getting really shitty and soft. <laughs> oh, shoot. Are you going to have to bleep me? Sorry. That's all good. Sorry. It's all Keep good. it clean. Keep it clean. It's all good. Um, yeah, I actually woke up with my first um, – sleeping injury two days ago and I can't turn my neck to the right all the way to my shoulder. That's the worst. I do that all the time. Actually, magnesium. I heard this. Take magnesium. Apparently it helps like your your muscles kind of like chill out a little bit. And like I take it all the time because I do that. you can use it Go as a ahead. gel as well. You can get it as a gel as a lotion and rub that oh. on you as well. Yeah. <laughs> pro tip, this pro is- tip for magnesium. <laughs> <laughs> Pro tip for getting super old. And yep. Everything's <laughs> cracking. I get it. Nicole, I do that all the time. All and the also, time. by the way, disclaimer, we are not medical doctors. This is not medical advice. <laughs> <laughs> How do we get here on a dog photography? No I, I mean, we're only two minutes in. I'm pretty sure you let us down the garden path there, Kaylee. <laughs> <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, all right. So what we're actually here to talk about today is back to that magical time back in Barcelona. We're going to do like a Barca recap because we were chatting and we just realized that, man, it has been so long since we started this. And there was such a ridiculously long three-year break in between. And I think a lot of people don't even know of this magical thing called a Barca. I think so. Do you know what? I just want to I just want to back up and give a li- little tiny bit of history because this is a little point of pride here for me and my mother specifically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so when I was talking to my mom back in I guess it would have been what? Like late 2015. 2015. Uh-huh. We're like planning this thing. We're going to do this most magical epic thing that's like 
so going to be so special and we're going to travel halfway across the world and teach uh, dog un, unprecedented teach dog photography um, and, you know, kind of just g- gather in a really incredible spot and all this, whatever. So I'm talking to my mom and I'm like, mom, this is the idea. We're going to do this workshop. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be in Spain. It's going to be right outside of Barcelona. Like, what do you think? We have to name it something, but we're totally stuck. We're stuck on you know, we, we just have no clue what to call it. And I'm throwing out all these different ideas that I think are quite like classy and fun and interesting. And she's like, you're going to be outside of where? And I'm like, outside of Barcelona. And she's like, like w- without a beat. She goes, of course, it's going to be Barcelona. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what a genius. Brilliant genius. Oh, my, I knew I came from genius genes. So Your mom is I- hilarious, Kaylee. She comes out with the coolest stuff. <laughs> yeah, cool or totally wild. And uh, yeah, uh, she's she's something. She's special. She's a special case, that's for sure. But I, I, br- I bring the idea to Nicole and Charlotte, and I, I'm kind of jokingly presenting it, like, okay, what do you guys think? It's going to be in Barcelona, so da na na na, Barcelona, and I We're expect like, them yes. to, <laughs> yes, I expect you guys to, to like laugh at it and go there. Yeah, definitely not. And you were both like. Oh my god, it's brilliant! Let's use it. And I'm like, wait a minute, no, 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 no. But I'm actually kind of kidding because how are we ever going to do these in different places all over the world if we're painted into a corner with the bark? In the I don't name? even. I don't even think we thought of that yet. <laughs> I, think I don't know. At that point, I don't think we were even thinking that there was going to be a whole series. We're like, well, let's just do this and see how yeah. this goes. I yeah. think it was um, when we were up to naming the next one that we were like, yeah. oh my gosh, Uh-oh, we have to yeah. stick with the Barker thing. Uh, well, we need the, to the find next- a name. Then the next two are fairly easy, and then we started getting really hard because we went to mm. Costa Rica, Barca Rica. Okay, yeah, and that then was France. Easy. Yeah, France. We did Bark Shore. I'm like, yep. okay, that works. Now we went to New Zealand. That was really Bark- tricky. It was, and and we were like, we could do Bark Zealand, but it was so long. It was like yep. so long, barely fit like- on the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and also like you can't really do like bark land for that because right. there's so many lands you know there's like yeah. ireland scotland iceland it could be any land so you right. have to like be specific so we came up with the the absolutely unique and genius bark zealand <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right right which then was only outdone by trying to figure out what the heck to name scotland i think yeah, that was right. the hardest one that, that was, was definitely easy. the trickiest one mm-hmm. yes. yeah yeah, and I know. I know. Um, shout out to Christy Trick, who's one of our students, is still pushing for Barkinsaw. Um, so maybe we'll come visit her one day for a domestic Barkinsaw. <laughs> Don't hold your breath, Christy. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and, and but there's so many good names. Like I'm like, oh, we gotta go to like Southern Germany in October for Barktoberfest. Oh my god, and yes. Barkievik. Yes. There's, there's a lot of options. And and now we have to go to places that just work for the bark name. We can't even pick, right. you know, like specific places anymore. It's like, oh, if it doesn't fit with bark uh, something. Then we're out. It's out. It's, it's out. out. <laughs> Kick it out. Oh. So anyway, credit and- to my mom for the name. Hey, shout out, Lori. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. Oh, so good. Oh, my gosh. There's there's going to be a lot of laughter at this one. Hope you guys don't mind listening to our laugh. Is, laugh, laugh is laughs. That's the word. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so I thought we'd start off and just doing like a recap of some of our favorite memories from the different ones. So I'll start. Well, we should. Yeah, we'll start still with Barcelona. The very first one, um, April 2016. I had never met either of you guys in real oh, life we before. Hadn't met you at all, Nicole. Uh, uh-uh, it was Amazing. all just yeah. online friends. Kaylee and I had met so before. Weird, but- Yes, I knew Charlotte. I already knew yeah. Charlotte because we, we met, met up in 2013. 13? Oh my I think it was, god, I, w- yeah. I was at least 15 pounds lighter, which is <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> wow, to take take me back because I was 15 pounds lighter and my knees weren't cracked. I was gonna say, and the knees didn't crack, <laughs> not quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we met in the Poconos in 2013. We did. Um, we had like yeah. a pet photographers meetup and there was like so few people in the industry at that time. There was like a small handful of people and like most of us were there at that thing in the Poconos, which was so cool. Um, so that was neat. And I met Charlotte there and I knew right away that like she, I would love to, you know, work with you and teach with you. I, I knew right Aww. away that we totally clicked. And yeah, so I so when Nicole approached me only a few years after that, I I was like, we got to get Charlotte Reeves on board here. So 
Then the dream team was born. Yes, right. <laughs> It was yeah, amazing. so I, I knew Charlotte in person, but Nicole, I had n- never even seen your face. <gasps> no, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. I'm sure. I'm sure I stalked you. I'm sure I stalked you on your website. And stuff, so I knew who I was looking for. But yeah, we had all these planning calls and everything. And then when I met you in the airport, it was just so wild. I was like picking up my rental car and like speaking very poor Spanish. You know, at the at the little <laughs> counter, and I remember seeing you out of the corner of my eye, and I was like, "Oh my god, here we go!" Like this kicked off. Like, did we even have Zoom to plan back then? I don't know that we used Zoom even back then. I don't then. think we did. It was prehistoric time. <laughs> maybe it was Skype. <laughs> oh, maybe Skype. Yeah, maybe. I must oh have seen your face. I'm sure I did. <laughs> oh, the <this> females. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, okay, so Barcelona. So that. um was the first time, I mean, I don't know, Nicole, that's one of the first times in my life that I truly realized that anything is possible. I mean, when we walked into that house, like we drove up to this little village, right? We're like all in our little separate rental cars. And we're like peeking in the door. We're like, is this (laughs) it? Do you think? I don't know. Oh, yes. Oh, but wait, look at that view. Yeah, that's it. I saw the picture. (laughs) Like I've never seen anything like this before in my entire life. Like this you know, this kid from this like, you know, low, like lower middle class, like sort of lifestyle, just, I don't know, not realizing that this sort of thing and this like kind of way of life in terms of like the woman who owned this home and yeah. was renting it out, who we got to meet, she was great. And like seeing that this could, this is the way that like other people live or can live if they, you know, if, if things line up right, I guess. Um, <laughs> or if you come from extreme generational wealth, maybe that. But uh, it was so wild though. I, I swear, I, I, I think I, if I recall, like I walked into that house and I burst into tears. Like I cried because it was I was so definitely beautiful. crying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that's pretty par for the course with me though. Anyway, isn't it? <laughs> I think I'm going to expect it. <laughs> it's just like, I looked around and I thought, my God, like if it wasn't for, and not, not to blow smoke. I'm really not. This is this is true. I think, Nicole, you have a very particular way of looking at the world that's really inspired me and opened up my belief for really what's what's possible. Um, not only f- like just for me, but for for anyone. Like if you believe, if you believe and you work really hard, because here I am standing in this, you know, I don't know what is it, like a 14th century villa. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, it used to be like a whole entire village. It used I, to be the old village wall. It was the walls of the house now. Right. Was there was like a there was like the old sign like uh, in the stone for the like apothecary. Yeah, Do you remember right. That? Like in the yeah. in one of the walls, and I'm looking around. Amazing. And I'm like I can't believe I'm I'm standing here, and I'm you know I get to teach dog photography here. I get to hang out with like all these cattle and dogs, and this is what we're doing for the next two weeks. And it was just mind blowing. And then there was at the time, what, 18 bedrooms or something like 16, 18 bedrooms, 16, I think, because there's 21 now and they added five. Oh, my good God. And then, you know, there's this pool overlooking a vineyard. It was just totally unreal. I mean, just to me, it was like I had to like pinch myself, legitimately pinch myself to make sure that that was all really happening. That was the start of and I don't mean to sound like it's super cheese, even though I am a cheese at heart, I'm a cheese ball. (laughs) But it was really the start of something like incredibly special and like completely magical and a totally new chapter in my life and and in my career. So thank you for that. And Charlotte for being part of this. I think we also helped to launch a bunch of careers at that very first Barcelona as well. I know know for sure. There was definitely some people who came who were right on the cusp of actually kind of making it as a pet photographer. And I think after attending Barcelona, I can think of three or four who went away and actually launched their businesses properly after that and are still going today. Yeah, and are full time. They they yeah. yeah ended up going full time not that long after that. Yep, that's true. There are some definitely some like legendary names in that original crew that are to- like you said still going, still Killing super it. successful. Yeah, yeah, that's wild. That's so weird and wild to think. I mean, honestly, if we had any small part in any of that, that is like just so wild, and I'm so grateful. I'm just yeah. so grateful. What a uh, ride it's been. It's been so fantastic. Yeah, just thinking back to that one, like some of the favorite. Uh, well, I mean, okay, I can't get over that. Oh, no, that's a lie. I was going to say that might be one of my favorite places for location for shooting. But then I thought, no, France, no, no New Zealand, no Costa Rica. That's a <laughs> lie. A They've all been my favorite. They will be um, the but yeah, I mean, that one with like the stone walls and the muted browns and greens. And the cobblestone streets of the little village oh my God. nearby. That was really cool. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Um, and yeah, of course, like the main, <laughs> my main favorite part of any barca is the chef. So we had oh, Connie. Dude, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, and That's right. um, we have to recap all the chefs as well. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. yeah. <laughs> Connie has been, oh, and Connie. So Connie was our chef of Barcelona, and I believe she's going to be our chef in Barcelona in October. No way. That's yeah. Fun. Oh, I love that's that. Really cool. I'm so happy. And um, her, she was from the UK and I think she was dating a Spaniard and um, she, we gave her an extra shirt that said Barcelona and <laughs> she wore it home or took it home. And he's like, you, they spelled Barcelona or Barcelona wrong. <laughs> so she's like, no, like Barcelona, like a dog bark, <laughs> like, but that's not, it did not uh, compute well for translation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I wonder if it upsets the locals that were like bastardizing their name. Yes. You know what I mean? Like their town name. We won't, we won't, tell, them. We won't tell them. That's crazy uh, now, yeah. ladies. Right. Mm. Uh, one of my other favorite memories, though, is uh, the house is in this teeny tiny little village, which is like 35 minutes south of actual main city bar. Barcelona. I want to say Barcelona. Barcelona. Um, mm. But like 10 minutes from the little seaside village of Sitches, which mm. is, oh, my God. It's like I I love that little village right on the ocean with amazing architecture and such great restaurants. And we um, shot there one night and oh. Yeah, that was my first ever taste of like a European city with like mm. European charm yeah. um, because I had never left the country before. Barcelona before the 2016. Bar well, no, that's not true. I guess I had been to I had been to Australia. You came to I Australia. Was in Charlotte yeah. in 20. Was that 2014? Charlotte. 2014. You came. Yeah. Yeah, and that's right. And it was um, we were teaching a workshop out there. But that's not oh, Europe. Geez. Definitely yeah, not. Yeah, no, that's not <laughs> Europe for sure. So yeah, so yeah, that was sorry. My first European ever adventure. And so that was my first taste of that, like, extreme, like, storybook charm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. every little tiny cobblestone winding alleyways and something, like, straight out of a, a Disney movie for me. Like, what I envisioned, you know, Spain would look like. What I envisioned, like, little bespoke, like, European towns would look like. And so it was completely magical for me, straight out of a fairy tale. And I was, like, totally freaking out. I was like, oh, look at this. Ah! <gasps> this door oh this like oh look the at this doors house, you know? the doors the were door amazing in that place i think that's what i like best about that little place is mm -hmm. the doors these mm -hmm. big epic like studded iron doors like you know it's three times the height of a person yeah, really yeah. cool in the, in the town and in the house i mean everywhere yeah yeah and and we put lots of dogs in front of those doors we did <laughs> <laughs> in a very, put very dogs popular in shooting clubs yeah, because that, right. it had that like green claw tooth bathtub and the right. master bath. It was yes, amazing. That was the room. So Sam and I had that room. We were staying in it and it was like our bathroom for the time we were staying in it. This is, like, again, this is in it. now we're moving back to the house. This is not in stitches. This is in, you know, in the in the Barca house. And we had um, this amazing, yeah, like claw foot tub that like over like the the doors would open and it overlooked the vineyard so you could like open the doors for like this fresh air bath it was so unbelievable and and we put a bulldog in it the first thing we said was oh my <laughs> god we, we have to use this yeah we definitely <laughs> yeah. have to use this so like we had all the attendees come in to our through our bedroom and into our bathroom and there's like you know like my hair straighteners like hanging out over there a box of tampons over there oh, put the bulldog in the, put the bulldog in the bathtub <laughs> nothing professional about this but my god it's so Fun. It was such a joy, I and um, the pool party. You remember the doggy pool party we had there? That's that was right. awesome. They had some rain. It was like an unscheduled little rain event. Oh my yeah, right. And then and that then all the dogs we... came and jumping yeah. into the pool, and we're all lined <laughs> up next to the pool watching the dogs jump in and photographing uh -huh. them. It was great. That's before we like really got our baptism by fire in uh, Scotland shooting in the rain. <laughs> oh yeah, that was that was proper. That was proper like yeah, inclement weather. It wasn't good. <laughs> inclement weather, yeah. I will oh, say I though, some amazing images did come out of that day. Yeah. Like despite yeah, the challenges in, in oh. Scotland that day, raining in Glencoe. Right. And it wasn't well, just rain, it was sideways rain. It oh, was it like was borderline hail it yeah really it was rain into and the direction that we were photographing in to get the best view was where the rain was coming from so we were going into our facing, open eyes yes <laughs> and into like the ends of our you know camera lenses and oh my gosh yeah. that was crazy but I love the images from that day they're so atmospheric yeah yeah, yeah I think they really gorgeous. worked it 
Yeah, I totally agree. Talk about a mood. That was so moody and just delicious. So yes, it was very cold though, to be fair, but it was mm. totally worth it because yeah, those photos are kind of like off the charts. Really, cool. yeah, yeah. Uh, and now we're talking about Scotland. We're I know. Just so we're getting ahead of ourselves. Sorry. We missed. Sorry. We missed some <laughs> proper opposite weather of Scotland, and that was Costa Rica, where yes. the light was somehow like sunny all the time, but somehow like the evening, like the evening gorgeous soft light lasted forever because it was like hazy or I think it was hazy yeah it was hazy yeah. and it was kind of diffusing the light especially down on the beach down on the beach yeah. in late afternoon yeah. was just a light yeah. down there was incredible yeah oh. that's right and Los Monos the monkeys oh. monkeys everywhere <laughs> monkey actually, party on the roof yeah <laughs> monkey party on the roof of the house I had <laughs> the bedroom one of the bedrooms that was on the top floor because that house was like five floors it yeah, was like a, almost it was like up a, tree a hillside, house. I guess. Was, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there was and they weren't like- always connected. You had to go outside. So like, the there was the top layer, and then outside there were like two more on the roof, roof, and then you go down a level, and it's like they all had exterior entrances built yeah. into this hill. I know that was wild, huh? I would love to yeah. go back there someday. My gosh, but yeah, I was in one of the rooms, like on the tippity top. So the only thing above me was like the rooftop deck. And one morning at like five, five this o'clock, this was in which- between the weeks because nobody else was there because yeah, it was just right. us. Yes, yeah. and, and you guys were too like low in the, in uh-huh. the house to hear it, but I'm famously not a morning person. <laughs> and it woke me up at like five o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, ah, we're being robbed. We're, we're like going to be held at gunpoint. We're being robbed because there was like a we're violent. In Central America. <laughs> <laughs> there was like a violent sounding like gang on the roof, and they were like running around. I'm like convinced there's breaking people up there. Glasses. Convinced they're breaking and entering. Definitely breaking glasses. I heard glass. Glasses shattering, chairs tipping over. I'm like, holy crap! I'm like, Sam, Sam get out of here! Up. And he was exhausted, so he wasn't he wasn't moving. So I was like, forget it, I'm going up. Like I'm ready. I got a stick to take with me, so I can like fight whoever it was off. I was going to be a hero and save Barkarica. And then I get up to the top and I peek over the edge, and it's monkeys. It's and it's like a, a troop of monkeys, like a band of monkeys. There's probably like sixteen monkeys, capuchin like monkeys, to be yes. exact. And they were all like shapes and sizes and there was babies and mums because it was like mating season or baby season or whatever. And, remember and that? there was one, remember the one that was like he was sitting on the, there's like a big day bed. He's just sitting on the day bed <laughs> doing a very inappropriate monkey yeah. things to himself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I remember. For everyone to yeah. see. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was same, furniture like- everywhere. They were just throwing stuff all over the place. The <laughs> tables were overturned. Like- the chairs were like on their sides. <laughs> they were like throwing glasses across the rooftop and everything was nuts. And all the little babies were riding on the mom's backs and their like big eyes would look over the mom's back and be like, what of it? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what are you going to do? And so I like throw my stick away and I run down and instead I get my 70 to 200 on my, on my camera so I <laughs> take pictures of the madness and I'm like freaking out. I'm the most excited I've ever been. It was such a joy. It was a pure joy. Um, that was something I've never experienced before or since. Yeah, we had a lot of wildlife photography breaks during that one. I was like, there's a sloth outside. Stop for a minute. Grab your camera. Yep. Oh, now there's squirrel monkeys. Two cans, right? Didn't we have two yeah, cans? Yeah, we, we saw all the things. We saw a uh, scarlet macaw flew by. A sloth was in the yard. We had howler monkeys the one day. Oh, those howler monkeys. My uh, gosh. In the middle of the night, the first night that I arrived, and I had done like <laughs> – I, mean, I was massively tired because I'd just done three flights to get there. for like, yeah, yeah. three yeah. days. And I was woken in the middle of the night by the sound of howler monkeys. Ooh. I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> no idea. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know yeah. what I was hearing. It was insane. <laughs> Those things are like otherworldly in their noises uh-huh. they make. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. That's so wild. Mm, so um, fun. Yeah. We had some breaks from classroom time because the moms were going across like the roof of the house with the babies. So yeah. we're like, the babies are out. You know, so we kept breaking for that too, which was <laughs> so spectacular. And then there was some showers had, were like open air. Do you remember there was like oh, a yeah. few? Oh, that's open right. Air. A scorpion. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'd say, I didn't realize there were scorpions there until probably halfway through in the bedroom that I had. The bedroom itself would, had a door and it's air conditioned, but the bathroom, the shower, would just was open. That's and- right. 
And I just would like get up because, you know, I'm in my 40s now. I just get up and have to pee in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> and I would just like barefoot, dark, walk in there, do my thing, go back. And then I was like, oh, squir- oh, I should turn on a light. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably a bat about to fly up your butt. <laughs> That would be an adventure. Uh, sure. <laughs> Scorpions in my shoes, bats oh, in my butt. Not a good adventure. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Oh, I actually one thing. My favorite piece from uh, Barcarica. Actually, both. Both of those we had um, from Barcelona the first time. We saved two dogs because I took two um, Galagos home, escorted them home to our local Greyhound Rescue in Pittsburgh, and then like my best friend rescued both of them. So I still get to see them all the time, which is like so so happy. And then one of our students from Barcarica, we had um, worked for dog models. We usually find someone local and hire them to help us manage dog models. And we um, worked with a local rescue that was run by U.S. expats. And um, was it just week two? We shot like basically at their little shelter or like right down the road from it in this magical little river oh, yeah. area. Yes. Um, and yeah, one of our students fell in love with one of the dogs and was like, how do I take this dog home? And, and flew home <laughs> with it. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Christine. Yes. <laughs> she totally rescued a dog from Costa Rica. How yes. special was that? That was so and and remember Coco, the dog, got to stay with us for like a night or two yes. at the end. And then we're like, we're yeah, like, dog yes. in the house. <laughs> dog in the house. Everyone's freaking out right now. Trying to Coco pet was the dog so popular. Most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that was awesome. Oh, yeah. Shooting at the beach, I think, is just oh, – we'll go down in history is like one of my favorite shoots ever. Do you guys remember that one dog we had at – I think it was week two – and it was yes, a Boston Romeo. Terrier. Yes, was Romeo. Romeo? <laughs> yeah, his name was Romeo, but his owner would call him like Rome for short. And he was just constantly flipping, flipping, yes. flipping. He was a very bouncy backflip. dog. Yes, yeah. he was a Boston like, Terrier. Legit mix. backflips like three feet yeah. in the air. Yes. And Craig from photography has a photo of him like upside down in his portfolio. <laughs> and I have a photo of that dog like mostly upside down in my portfolio as well. I think everyone <laughs> has a photo of that dog upside down who was there. That, you're day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that dog was incredibly just kept flipping and flipping and flipping. It was like, what a riot. Oh, it's crazy. I've never, I've not experienced that since. I've not had a yeah. flipping dog. So no, was- another another dog that I really liked working with was, and that's actually probably the, my favorite shooting location too, was the Aqueduct in France. Yes, um, that was yes. such an epic location. You know, this two thousand year old Roman aqueduct, and we got access to be able to shoot like where it went over the river and sort of all around it, and shooting with it in the background. And the dog there, I don't know if you guys remember. I can't remember what her French name was, but her translated to English. Yes, Lady Meatball. That's the one. <laughs> I remember. I didn't get to photograph her because I think you, your, I don't know, your groups had her or something. But I saw her from afar. Lady Meatball was righteous. She was, she was such a lady. She was so beautiful. She was a French bulldog, right? Uh-huh. She was. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she was such a great model, and she just worked it. She worked it for everybody that photographed her. What? Um, so. So everyone that shot her ended up with some really epic photos with the aqueduct in the background, of course. Oh. Um, so, yeah, yeah that the, was great. The locations in France, I think, might have oh – I say this every time – but the aqueduct yeah. and, like, the vineyard. The village. Gosh, where else the did we – The village. That the little village. The village. Ah, oh, that is what's so magical. With that all village. the yeah. puppies. Yes. Yeah, there was, like, there was a, like a litter terriers. of puppies. Yeah. And there was a Jack awesome. Russell Terrier for you, a Jack Russell Terrier for you. <laughs> 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 Everybody takes from a Jack Russell Terrier. Go. Yeah. And a gorgeous oh. Australian Shepherd for me. That Aussie yeah, there was right. really was really cool. And the cobblestone streets and just oh, it was just picture perfect, that little town. Oh my god. Absolutely that loved house. it. We got in at the right time for that magical house because yes. right after it was for sale when we were there. That's right. It was like on yeah. the market when yeah. we were there. Um, and I think it was only like, I say only, but it was like, wasn't it only like 5 million euros yeah. or something? Yeah. It wasn't that crazy expensive for how incredible it was. Cause it was, right. you know, I guess not in the main city, um, which is always um, surprising to me how affordable like outside main cities are in Europe. It's like, Oh, right. I want to live in this amazing little village. Um, 
But yeah, then they raised it to like seventy thousand dollars a week. I'm like, oh, we would have to charge <laughs> not going back more. there again. <laughs> <laughs> and you say yeah, but a house, but it wasn't a house. Like uh-uh. it was a chateau. It was just yeah. the most. It, it was, was the, epic. It was borderline some castle. King of France's castle. At yeah, one it, point. Was, it was. It was. Th- it was legit. Like 13th century. Some parts of it had the original wall paintings from the 13th That's century right, in the event space. And there was yeah. like a church in the center of it, right? There was also a the well. Chapel, Remember yeah. that had the well in the basement. Ooh, I and told you Samara well. from the ring. <laughs> yes, yeah, she was going to come out and get us at night. I told you. Yeah, and the no rooftop spa down there. also. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh. Do you remember like a part of the house was – I don't know, like an add-on, and it was super modern, and there was all these glass floors glass, that you like. Yeah, you walk the staircase, oh, yeah. the yeah. staircase, and all the landings were glass, so you could walk up the stairs and look down at people yes. coming up the stairs underneath you. It was a it was, wild. It was, it was if really you were afraid cool. of I love you took place. another. Uh, you took a another way. Path. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I will just do a shout out to the chef we had at Parkshaw oh, in France Theo. as well. Okay, Theo listen, was say, amazing. What an unbelievable cook, and also easy on the eyes. Let's be <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think there are a few crushes had while we were there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So if you want to look him up, Theo Michaels, he has. Uh, a new cookbook that just came out, I guess, during COVID. It's in my kitchen. Ah, um, I'm not a good it. enough. I did. I'm not a good enough chef to actually cook anything in it, but it looks really <laughs> pretty and it makes me happy. Well, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, that was, he was remarkable. I mean, like I said, not only in looks, quite the chef as well. So <laughs> oh my God. He, was on, he was on Celebrity MasterChef, wasn't he? Yeah. I, the, the one of the UK, he was like a celebrity chef in the UK. Yeah, yeah. And I think he, he was like a- quote came with the house. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, weirdly, weirdly, he had a British accent, right? Even though he was in France, but I, I think he... Well, he lived in the UK. He yeah, flew down to, to cater for us. Yeah, and wow. so did... I think whoever managed the house all lived in the UK. Because remember, we had... Um, there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Amy, I think the company that what, ran what, it was a UK-based what, company or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And their whole that was, team was UK folks, mm-hmm. which I'm friends with all of them on Facebook Me now. too. So Me too. Them. I love it. I love keeping up with them even. It's it's wild to have this collection of, like, friends from all over the world now. It's really amazing. Like, every time I, you know, like, pop over there and log in, I see all these different completely random people. Like, I'm friends with the chefs from Costa Rica. You remember, oh like, Marco? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep up with them, and they were a riot. And and I I really brushed up on my Spanish with them. They really yep. like, talked me through. They were giving me like Spanish lessons every day, and I I did I I left there with quite the repertoire. Oh yeah, and fun fact because we asked them because at that one we had you know Australian accent, UK slash New Zealand accent, we had. German accents. We mm-hmm. had all over the U.S. Canadian, like we had every single dialect of English yeah. possibly spoken on the planet. And we asked him, like, "Do we sound different to you?" He was like, "Nope, nope, <laughs> <laughs> nope." That's all the same insane. to me. <laughs> That's crazy. I can't get over that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. You know what, though? Until this yeah. recent trip for me to the UK, where we just were for Scotland, teaching yep. Blacklander, I had a hard time deciphering between different types of like British accents. Mm. But now, now that I've really traveled like thoroughly through the whole UK, yeah, not all of it. I didn't get super far south, but I got like to the Cotswolds and I, at least I got to that far. And I can actually kind of tell now where, yeah. like what region's what. And so I'm pretty proud of myself for that. <laughs> I am I'm proud of you. Thank you. Um, I'm sure anybody listening to this from England is cracking up at me because <laughs> I can imagine that to them, their accents are as different as like m- oh, you know, my Boston area versus like, you know, like Georgia. Yeah. But for me in the US, there's so many different like heavy, heavy accents that um, I feel like it would be crazy not to be able to notice them but i bet you you know like your average international person that came over might not immediately be able to tell between a southern accent and like a new england accent yeah i reckon i can you think yeah 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 especially australians can we hear a lot of american accents though on tv so Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> we hear you guys all the time. <laughs> we just yeah, never I think shut up for uh, for like Marcos because those English is a second language. So like when I hear, you know, I can speak barely any Italian, barely any Spanish. Like you're just listening for words, you know, where you're not <laughs> listening to dialects at that point. You're just like, I'm true. just trying to understand. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. <sighs> all right, all right. 
now that we're done with our language lesson, our linguistics history. <laughs> uh, um, oh, New well, Zealand. Listen, I have one last uh, one okay. last Arca memory Back. I have yep. to mention. Yes. It is probably my favorite moment at that's like ever happened at a barca and that was i don't know i'm sure you guys remember in france mm-hmm. it was one of our last nights with i don't know week one i want to say <laughs> we went to this little week two oh, that was week two i say two oh, oh very okay. last okay. night yeah oh uh-huh. my god okay so remember we went to week, this um... week one was devil sock and week two was oh the... fair fair uh-huh. so the devil sock was a good memory too and we'll get there but yeah the, but for week two we went to this little we didn't know we just booked dinner at a little place in um, this t- like the Uzus. city that was closest, Uzus, yeah. right? Uh-huh. That was the closest to us, and we like happened upon the most like unbelievable band. There was a live band there, and they were this like jazz band. They were like this New Orleans like proper New Orleans like jazz band, like randomly in like rural France, and the music was so amazing that all of us like kicked off our shoes. Like we all had like no shoes on for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> we're dancing. This is what I remember, yeah. and we're all dancing. At, like almost everybody got up and we're just all dancing and then all you know some of the locals were all dancing with us and we're just like grabbing random people's hands and getting them up from the tables and we're all dancing together and like I will never forget that night because the food was amazing mm-hmm. and then like just the dancing and the live band and then I remember Sam my fiance is a portrait photographer and he thought the guys in the band were so cool and they were they were really like characteristic they had these like awesome looks to them you know and so he like pulled this pulled them aside and asked if he could take their portraits and so he pulled them out like one by one into the little cobblestone alleyway and did their portraits with like one light and his like medium format camera and those portraits are some of my favorites that he's ever taken they're so beautiful they're so special and it was just like what a night to remember that was one of the most special memories from a barca for me for sure and i love looking back on those portraits that sam took too because it just takes me right back yeah yeah yeah, the week before dinner was equally awesome, but just more low key. But it was remember way. that, yeah, <laughs> it was in that that gorgeous outdoor courtyard with the yes. lights and all sorts of cheese plates, including the devil sock, which was the stinkiest cheese ever created. Well, and that's the thing is, like, covered. I will try, I will try any cheese, <laughs> like any cheese known to man that's been made. For, for me to eat, I will eat. Even if it was for me to eat, I'll probably still eat. I love. Would cheese. you do in the Amazing Race? <laughs> they had to eat maggot cheese. Oh, oh, oh! Wow. Like with actual live maggots crawling oh, through. Oh, I reckon you draw you? the line there, Kaylee. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I reckon I would. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I would. Oh my god, that's so funny. That's so gross. Good. Goodness. Oh. Um, tell me what the cash prize is, and I'll reconsider. A million dollars if you win. I mean, a million dollars I, I might be that. able to down a maggot or two. Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> but um, no, this cheese came out under a – yeah, Charlotte mentioned it came out like under a glass case because it couldn't be like revealed to the air until <laughs> – so And we were outside. Like we're all sitting outside yeah. so it wasn't even like we're right. in a tiny room. And then they they were like, anybody for the devil's sock? You know, and you're like, oh, yeah, like I'll do it. No, like no big deal, right? And then they take the top off and all of us like – Pa- like we were like little plants with happy flowers that were growing and then suddenly we all wilted and died because the <laughs> cheese was like it was like the green smoke coming off the cheese like the stuff that Pepe Le Pew would smell you know what yeah. I mean like when the odor smelled, was like smell. solid it was so disgusting and we did have someone eat it I actually didn't eat that cheese but I want to say Carl ate it was that Carl Thomas oh maybe I, I think he ate it uh, so that was wild. Uh, that was a special kind of French cheese that I will never forget. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> one right. last, one last food thing. Okay, in Spain, <laughs> I remember this. In Spain, <laughs> listen, Nicole. You know that brevity is not my strong suit. <laughs> well, and I also know I literally was recording a podcast episode today or a call. I was doing a call, and I'm like, every single time I'm on a call or a podcast, it comes back to food. I'm like, I should start a food blog or something. I know, because I know, seriously. <laughs> Seriously, no fruit, a- no fruit allowed. Food blog, no fruit allowed. Goodness, <laughs> what that you are a crazy banana sandwich for that. But oh, no banana. Well, no banana. That's true. Nutella. Um, so <laughs> y- we went out to this like really nice place in Spain. It was just the th- I want to say it was just like the four of us. It was just 
you, me, Charlotte, yeah. and Sam. And it was like right before the workshop started, whatever. But it was like fancy and we kind of like dressed nice for it and everything. And then you got this like chocolate oh, thing. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> you got some sort of a chocolate like cake thing and, and you, you ate the whole thing. Quickly. Of course I did. And then you looked around because it was so fancy. You're like, is anyone looking? And then <laughs> no, oh, one's, right. so no one's looking at you. So you lift the whole entire plate to your face and you lick it completely clean. You, li- <laughs> you lick the plate completely clean. <laughs> Don't tell my kids because I yell at them if they try to do that. Outdoor. It was that good. It, was it really was. One of the yeah. best things I've ever eaten in my and entire then- life. And then Charlotte followed suit because she had the same thing. She got, she, she, got set the, she set the precedent for it. So I thought, why not? It was, yeah, it was that has, good. She got social permission from Nicole to act a fool. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just leading the way, guys. It's all I'm good. Pretty, I'm pretty sure, though, we were in a booth. Like it wasn't we were, out. And there was nobody yeah. like back there by us. We were in the back of the no, restaurant, I think. It wasn't like we're in the middle of a, a room for yeah, people. Yeah. You, do, no. you don't even remotely have to qualify it. It is all good. My <laughs> kind of people are the kind of people who like the plate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. One other food memory from France. Did you guys try the salted cod that spread on the bread? No, no. That sounds no, like Oh, you don't like fish. <laughs> oh, my God. It was the most delicious thing. And I was actually watching. Um, I've been watching Stanley Tucci searching for Italy in preparation for my Italy trip coming up. Yeah. Um, and he just goes around and eats all this amazing food in these different regions. And in northern Italy, they have like that's where it originated from. They have the salted cod. So I'm oh. hoping I can find it in southern Italy. Or if not, I'm just going to like make a trip to Venice just to go eat that salted cod again because it was the most delicious freaking thing i've ever eaten you could just get a whole bunch of cod you could go fishing get some cod and won't squish be it up no put it yep put no. it in a blender squish it up no sprinkle some salt on it call it a day <laughs> no i don't think i don't think <laughs> i think, I think you can make this <laughs> <laughs> oh. all right all right well it's gonna be a five-hour podcast we well, gotta move to new zealand <laughs> <laughs> new zealand oh, oh i've got to say so you know, we went over there and we had planned, I had planned, my family was flying over at the end and then we were going to do like two weeks of traveling around and we're like, oh, you know, we love animals and we're like, all right, we'll do Australia. So I'm like, I was thinking New Zealand would, would it be good for the kids? So it would be like a great trip for me and Brett would it be like driving around and seeing epic scenery, but like not a ton for the kids to do. Dude, I was so wrong. You thought hmm. wrong, baby. I love New Zealand so freaking much. I love Australia too, Charlotte. Oh, but, good. Uh, but yeah. here's the thing: <laughs> no. New Zealand has nothing that will kill you, and Australia has everything that will kill you. Nah, I think oh, my backyard has more things that might kill me than Charlotte's backyard. You think so? Charlotte's backyard has okay. Name all the things that will kill you, Charlotte, in your backyard. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's not much. I mean, I'm still alive. Like you got some <laughs> crazy spiders, crazy, crazy spiders, yeah, we've got crazy some snakes. Spiders, we've got some snakes, but like, yeah, I don't know. I think that whole thing is just completely overblown. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's just put out there to scare people away, basically. Well, that's so we can't keep, you don't want keep us our anyway. country for ourselves. Yeah, well, <laughs> you don't they want all these tourists. Have, they did have um, in Sydney. We like walked down to like one of the little swimming pool kind of things. Is it the blue ringed octopus? It's like oh yeah, tiny, yes. tiny. It's like the size of your hand, mm. maybe, but it has enough venom to kill like twenty seven men. I'm like, what the hell is that <laughs> eating that it needs that much venom? Twenty seven men, <laughs> big no, things. I, yeah, I went to when I went to Australia to to work with Charlotte in twenty. I don't know, fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Home. Yeah. Um, I went to Port Douglas, which is like really absolutely gorgeous and like kind of oh, yeah. blue blue ocean water and just tropical and magical and you could not swim in the ocean so like we went to no. the beach and there was like hundreds of people like sitting on the beach but not a soul in the water because you're like yeah. not allowed to be in the water because so many things will murder but, like you the box the jellyfish season yes the box mm. jellyfish and then like crocodiles as well um because it's like I'd- i guess it was kind of brackish or whatever where we were but it was pretty wild you had to be really careful it's you just got to pick the right season, basically. Yeah, I, yeah. I was, I was just, yeah, wrong time, <laughs> <laughs> wrong time, wrong place, <laughs> wrong time, right? Oh, place. oh all right. But anyway, New Zealand. yeah, New, New Zealand. Zealand. New Zealand was freaking epic. Might be one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Bob's Cove will forever live in my memory as like that the place most is relaxing, really, really cool. gorgeous spot. Ever. And we went for a swim there. That's it was right. great. That was, yeah, that water it was, was like so cold. April? 
right? It was it April? Mm. So it was like pretty cold. It wasn't yeah, as cold was really as you cold. swimming in the loch in Scotland. No, it wasn't. No, that was that was like instant numbness, can't feel your limbs cold, that lock in Scotland. Craig and I went swimming. Actually, and who joined us I in the second I waited for you week? up in the hot tub and watched you walk down while I sat in the hot tub of the house. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah, we, even, we, even roped, yeah, we even roped Carol into coming with us and That's she right. went for a swim in the lock as well. But that was, I think that was really much colder. But yeah. I will say that, that um, in New Zealand was pretty cold and we spent ages in the water too. Yeah, yeah. Because we photographed Ralph in the water in Bob's <laughs> Cove. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I did like a half underwater shot of Ralph in the water. Hardest. Yeah. And that water was so clear. Ever to photograph. It was so clear. Yeah, that's true. And yes, Ralph is the hardest dog ever to photograph. It's so funny. <laughs> I joke with Craig all the time, Craig from photography, because I say like, why did you get like the impossible, like the final boss of impossible to photograph dogs? <laughs> I think I Ralph think is gorgeous. Chris just but likes to torture so him. Hard. Yeah, yeah, because he's small, he's tiny and black with long curly hair and deep set dark black eyes. Yeah, so like there's, black hole eyes. Yeah, yep. and he is a freaking darling. He's an awesome dog. I love him, but he's I and he loves really tiramisu. Yep, that's right. He, <laughs> <laughs> he loves tiramisu. <laughs> that Craig, is that's Craig's dog. That's yeah, exactly right. <laughs> yeah, the dog. Yeah. I love it. One. Oh my god, those locations there were so ridiculously epic too. Like that showed over creek. Or shot over, shot over canyon. Shot over yeah. river. Yeah. River, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was really cool. A couple of different places we went to along that river. That was yeah. amazing. The water there is just out of control. It's just so clear and just so fast in the rivers. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then, then there's canyons to- with the bridges across. Mm-hmm. Then we went to like was it Cornet Peak, which was like that really epic mountain view oh, yeah. shot that we did. Yeah. Uh-huh. I yeah. can't remember which of the two mountain views that was. I think it was Coronet. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was. Yeah. That was something that was really, really special. Oh. And the light was so amazing up there. Um, that was definitely one of my super highlights from Bark Zealand. Um, yeah. But and yeah, Arrowtown also- was also awesome. That was oh, another I shooting forgot. location. I forgot about Arrowtown. And the little village with the by the orchard. Began Cromwell. With C. Cromwell. Yeah. Yeah. Cromwell. Was- oh, yeah. That's right. That was really cute. Yeah. yeah. My favorite, though, has to be the tobogganing. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. So, I, so to <laughs> preface this, if, if anybody doesn't know, in the middle of our weeks at the at the Barkas, we have one like sort of break day where we have like super fun activity that we do. It's, you know, it's optional, but like we have the ability to. We kind of give you different options of super fun things like activities that we can do together. Like ATV, tobogganing, yes, horseback riding. riding, and like, you know, really fun things. Um, and this one was such a unique thing because this was in Queenstown, New Zealand, where they had like this what the, do you call it tobogganing where you like ride a little cart down the side it was, of a mountain? It was like a bigger version. You guys in the U.S. will remember, and at least anyone born in the 70s or early 80s, the turtles that you would get to ride at gym class in, like, elementary <laughs> school. Yes, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like that, except a little bit bigger and much faster. And you go down a mountain. And it was such a riot because it was like Mario Kart. I yeah. felt like we were all going down. Like, we took a chairlift up. And then you had your little, like, cart hanging off the bottom of the chairlift, right? And you get off and you get your cart or whatever. And then you get... Like everyone's in places, like ready, set, go. <laughs> and then you <laughs> race all, down. You race down. And it is such a riot because people would be like going around corners and like flying off of their, <laughs> their little like carts or whatever. And they would like roll down. This sounds there like was, a, a hazard. But <laughs> there was like an Wait. element of competitiveness like that we saw oh, yeah. in, in some people for that. That was really it, interesting. <laughs> I mean, I was, I saw one of our, um, one of our photographer, like attendees who is a f- absolute riot, who I love so much. I'll shout out to, to her, Amanda Brooke. I just love her. We were, Famous. we were going, oh my God, just, just what a doll. I just love this woman. And we're going down the toboggan thing together and Craig is with us as well. And Amanda flips over and like flies off her little toboggan and Craig 
can't stand it. He can't handle it. He's like absolutely cracking up to the point that he's like in tears. And she's laughing. She's cracking up and she's rolling. She's rolling off the thing like going like, oh, ho, ho, ho. He, I swear that it was Mario Kart and like everybody was like a little character from Mario Kart because all I could hear the whole time was this like cacophony, like this chorus of Craig's laughs going around the corner and they go, they go by me and they'd be like, ah, and then he'd come back and it would get louder. Oh my God, I was peeing my pants by the end of it. I was fully sitting in pee. <laughs> Not actually, but you know. <laughs> That's how I express myself. Um, but that was one of my favorite like midweek activities that we've ever done. Yeah. That and then the and then the wild horses in France. When we do, remember oh, we went oh, right. Yes, yes, that's right. I remember that, Kaylee, because we didn't really. That felt very unsafe. Like I, yeah. I, I feel like <laughs> we, we didn't need to sign anything beforehand. They didn't really care yes. about helmets, yes. none of that kind of stuff. And I remember at one point we were going. I think we were like, okay, you can go a bit faster up this hill. And your horse took off, Kaylee. That's right. Your horse yes. just took off and like they had to like come after you, like run after you and like pull the horse up for you. And we're like, hey, what are you doing afterwards? And you're just like, I just wanted the horse to be free. It was just running. I felt bad pulling it up. Like you had such a good time with this horse bolting on you. It was hilarious. And I'm like, That's I funny. have no idea what I'm doing. And I remember <laughs> Kaylee getting in trouble in mm-hmm. Costa Rica. Was it Costa right. Rica? It was Costa Rica. You're, you're like, I'm going to try it. You're trotting. I was like, I'm gonna do the fancy thing where we run in and I do the and then I do the um butt I'm thing that's up. opposite of the horse's butt. What's that called? <laughs> posting. Yeah, posting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to two equine lovers, <laughs> two horse girls, and I have no clue what I'm doing, but I'm like, I'm gonna do it. Like, watch me go. And then I take off on the horse and I did get in trouble. And I will tell you this. I will tell you that the Costa Rica one, Charlotte, was the oh, most. That's like, uh, the most yeah. That was the most regulated thing that we've ever done, and, <laughs> and I don't think any release we could have possibly had in our uh, Barca retreat nope. uh, workshop no uh, agreement could possibly relieve us from the liability, even though we were in another <laughs> country, and even though we signed nothing before the horse riding slash yep. very dangerous whitewater. Um, body surfing down so, a yep. river. <laughs> yes, yes. Yep. It was like so dangerous and so unregulated. And the kid, he was like, dra- like you know, he was like 15, 16 years old, like riding, <laughs> guiding us around. And he's like, you want to jump in this whitewater river? And we're like with no swimmies, with no floaties. He's like, yeah, he's like, are you guys decent swimmers? We're like, yeah, yeah. All right, I got something for you. This is about the regular tour. Nope. Yeah. He's like, you guys seem cool. You can jump in this white water river. And of course we did. We're like, yes, we're going to do it. So like 90% of us did. There were like three people that were like, no way. They like used their heads. And they were like, maybe I'll just stay on the side while you guys drown and pass away. It was totally worth it. And that water was just beautiful. Like you'd, you'd yeah. expect this mountain stream. It was like super clear and really fast. You'd expect it to be freezing, but it wasn't. It was amazing. It wasn't. I know. That was <laughs> That was definitely one of my favorite memories too. That was such a special, special day. Oh my There's gosh. There's been a lot of really magical stuff. I gotta well, say. I know. We didn't even talk about Scotland, the most recent with our little baby lambs right behind the house oh that God, were just the cutest so little baby lambs. lambs. So, and fun fact, the lambs would violently feed on <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> they punched their way the in there, didn't they? <laughs> Yeah, they, they would run across the field like in a fit of joy towards the mom's, t- towards the mom. Her, I guess udder? Is that what uh-huh, you call it? Yeah, udder? Uh-huh, yeah. yep. Okay. And they would smash the Headbutt. Boob. So yeah. hard. They would headbutt the boob, for lack of a better term, <laughs> with their little cute faces, like really headbutt it. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, 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 bam. And like three or four of them at once. This poor mom, she's like trying to stand up and then they like smash it super hard. And I guess they get the milk flow in that uh-huh, way or something. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, and their little tails go wild like little whirly gigs when they get the milk and it was the cutest thing ever but also I was like parenting is hard kids <laughs> <laughs> are brutal I can't imagine I was told by one of our tour guides we went ATVing midweek one of the weeks and he told me that when um uh when a, a not a lamb a sheep right yeah uh huh Oh yeah, because when it's an adult, it's a sheep, and then yeah. when it's a lamb, it's a baby. Yes, I'm learning <laughs> second grade, <laughs> second grade levels over here. Um, yeah, yeah, that when the mom has triplets, which I uh-huh. guess is like pretty common with with sheep. 
um, to have triplets. When she has triplets, she abandons one because she can't take care of more than two at once. So there's a lot of like lamb orphans. So I got to go squish and cuddle lots of lamb orphans that were being taken care of. Yeah, that was the, the best surprise of that yes. activity. It was like, well, we get to cuddle with the baby lambs. Yes. And, and they were like in your food. lap and yes. just like, oh. And you're going to try to eat my shirt and my pants and my socks. Okay. <laughs> amazing that was amazing oh i love it yeah it's it's funny um just the difference in uh just a photographic atmosphere of all Mm. the different places we've been from like brilliant sunshine to the hazy costa rica to like all the seasons and 45 minutes in scotland Mm. to you know it was it was just crazy but oh man it was epically beautiful and a lot of like Glencoe really reminded me a lot of New Zealand with the, just the yeah. mountains and that high Definitely. I think it's the it's the same type of landscape it's like those glacial valleys yeah yeah um and the like the locks and stuff and just these epic mountains with like the really smooth curved sides on them that just kind of go yeah. up yeah they yeah. were like jagged mountains right they were like no the smoothest, they were like, like carved bold. yeah yeah that was they were really cool I totally and just the weather it. just changed in an instant. And we got all sorts of rainbows and mm, rainbows. Mm. I've never seen so many rainbows in my entire life. I'd be like, emergency. <laughs> it's a rainbow. Pull like, over. Really, it's the third one of the I day. Know. And then by, like, seriously, by like the 11th one that I saw in one day, I was like, I guess it's not an emergency anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Pretty special. And the, yeah, the cows and. Oh, just all the things. It was great. But as far as like the photography went there, I found it really like really uh, challenging, but also super inspiring to push Mm. my boundaries on like what type of weather am I shooting in and like how do I deal with all this changing light all the time and how do I make something really super epic that I'm still crazy proud of like in the hail and rain Yeah, Um, (laughs) because there's – Go ahead, that, sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say that Glencoe day for the first week. And we even had a passing shower the second week, but it wasn't anything like that. First week was no. a proper rainstorm. It didn't, yeah. it didn't stop. Almost hail. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, it was, did not was, stop the whole, uh-huh. the whole time. I think and we then, lasted an hour. And then yeah. I think that was the only one where legitimately all of our models showed up and we're like, oh, they all just drove two hours. Like, I guess we're doing this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And everyone, right. everyone got out of the car and everyone uh-huh. did it and all the models did it. Like, yeah, was, everyone exactly. was just such troopers for that. Yeah. Well, well, the I mean, dogs like- were soaked. We were soaked. The models were soaked. Like, yeah. Everyone and then we had an hour soaked. drive back, back in the car, oh. like, soaked. Yeah. Do you know what? Yeah. I took my pants off for the drive home. <laughs> <laughs> I was so cold. And I was so, okay. So my stupid quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes here for anyone who can't see a podcast. Waterproof pants that I got on like Amazon, <laughs> right? Of course. We're supposed to keep my like <laughs> leggings underneath dry. Forget it. That is false advertising. Wrong. Oh, I was send so- you mine. Mine stayed really dry. Oh man. Yeah, give me a it. Because that's what listen to me right now that is the brand that i have really i'm serious what? but maybe i got the crappy discount ones i don't know maybe <laughs> i got mine before were, i went to iceland when someone was like you need waterproof pants and windproof pants like they need yeah. to be winterproof they're so they're gore-tex they're waterproof and windproof and wow. no one told were, me no. that and i didn't have waterproof pants so at all key. that day yes. and i was yes. soaked through to my undies <laughs> in, same, in same probably Charlotte. about 15 minutes and same. it was very unpleasant so I was in the car with only Sam and Lynn, uh, Lynn McGregor from from Scotland, who was in week one. And I said, okay, I was so cold on the way home and I knew we had an hour and I was soaked to the bone. And I go, all right, here's the thing. I know Sam doesn't care, right? Le- Excuse me, Lynn, um, would you mind if I take my pants off? And she's like, oh, oh, I don't mind at all. You know, <laughs> that's me doing a terrible Scottish accent. Um, but she has the most beautiful Scottish accent on earth. But she, it was so cool and so chill. And she was like, no, it's totally fine. Yeah, go for it. Definitely take your pants off. So I... <laughs> So you had leggings on underneath, right? No, I took off my leggings. I had oh, underwear, but I was oh, wearing my okay. I was wearing my hiking boots and my underwear. <laughs> Disclaimer: This does not usually happen at Barkas. This was an extreme situation. <laughs> We're gonna no, like, what? We're gonna attract a whole different crowd now. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I'm like, listen, it's no different than a bathing suit. And I was sitting with her in the jacuzzi like the night before. So who cares, right? So she was cool. As long as she was comfortable, I was cool. And I felt so much better as soon as I peeled off all of those freezing cold, disgusting layers because it was – I was like, I'm going to get really sick if I sit here in like really ice cold stuff for this long. So yeah, full disclosure, <laughs> I won't be taking off my pants at any future ones. Well, especially Spain is really like no rain. So you should not get soaked unless yeah. you fall in the pool or something. <laughs> there you go. And then you can go change. <laughs> so no guarantees for a pantsless Kaylee Greer. <laughs> no, just I can't so you know you weirdos promises. that are out there like, oh, now I'm coming. <laughs> I'm not making any promises. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, all right. So in an effort of brevity that we've already totally blown past. Destroyed, and in fact. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> I, I do want to touch on, you know, because things have changed so much since 2016 when we first started. When we first started this, we had built these out as like, basically like a workshop you come to and you learn all the things about running a business and photographing dogs. And oh my God, we had so much content crammed in five. Cause even that first one, we didn't do the half day break. It was that's five right. full days that's of right. classroom. And yeah, we're like, that's a lot. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Um, and you know, since then, you know, the Charlotte has unleashed education. I've got the hair of the dog Academy. Like we have these places where people can learn the business stuff. People can learn the basic craft stuff, but at the same time, we're like, well, we want to make sure if somebody hasn't been in our world that like everyone's starting at this baseline. So We've really super excited for this next round. We kind of tested it out a little bit um, at, at Barklander where we have made it a little bit more workshop, like, well, a lot more workshop and mm. a lot less like practical. classroom content. Yeah, more practical, less theory, I guess. Yeah, but we didn't want to just be like, oh, good luck. I hope you got the theory somewhere. So... Starting for Barcelona, we are going to take those theory classes and kind of create create our online doing what we do best, like an online exclusive Barca classroom thing that people can get caught up on. So if they, you know, haven't been through our academy or unleash or like they haven't seen like you know their fresher on light and like session tips, like how to work with these dogs, settings, like all these different things. It's going to be exclusive Barca content that they can watch before they get there. So then when we get there, we can be all hands on deck, shooting, editing, like interactive, like let's really dig into the nitty gritty. So excited. Yes. I love it. Wait, pause for dramatic effect. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. <laughs> that was hard for me to pause. Any know, moment of silence is very uncomfortable. Very challenging. You like yeah. to fill those moments of silence, don't you, Kate? <laughs> they have I to have be to. filled. Every <laughs> second has to be filled. Yes, exactly. Yeah. No, this is this is amazing. This is super exciting because we really want people to get the most out of it to like really mm-hmm. be able to leave this week of you know this like kinship and camaraderie where you're with your people and you're feeling so inspired when you leave and actually have this like incredible thorough toolbox to then go home and and change your life and change your world um because you know w- we found in the past and and don't get me wrong i loved having that like mega crazy amount of super like in your face like kind of classroom content yeah but finding that like really it's it's especially the like the hands-on on location stuff that really sticks with people mm-hmm. that really helps people improve their craft and then not only that but it's the really you know shooting together working together hands-on but then afterwards we're reviewing everything together mm-hmm. um, as a group. yeah that's been the biggest the biggest feedback when we started adding the image reviews which we did for hound vision then we brought it into the barcas like everyone loves just to see like everyone submits their best image from the night and so you get to see how 15 different people shot and saw the same location and it is eye-opening it's yeah what, it's, it's really magical. surprising sometimes it's so surprising because an image will pop up and you'll be like oh who took that and we just yeah. have no idea and, and then they and pop the cool up and then it was me you're like it's amazing <laughs> and sometimes you'll be like, where even was that? You know, because you'll mm-hmm. be like, I was at the same the spot as you. I didn't even see that log or that rock or that like that shot Or you might all. have saw it. Like you saw like, oh, I know where that is. I did not see that. Like, you know? right, so, right. Yeah. 
It's not- remarkable. It's a really special thing to kind of see through the eyes of all these different artists in the same room. And I feel like that even for me has been like a massive grow- growing point and like learning mm-hmm. point of, of really opening my eyes to all the different possibilities in a particular location. And like I said, the way that different artists see a scene can be really inspiring and really help me going forward going like, oh, you know what? Like I'm thinking back to this, you know, this uh, location that I was at, 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 you know, Barklander and I saw how xyz you know shot this this scene and wow i should really think about like like changing up my perspective and looking at a scene uh-huh. from this level or whatever this perspective ne- next time i'm on a shoot so i've really learned a lot myself at these and from from the photographers who who attend these things and from you guys um so it's hugely valuable so we, we wanted to put a lot more focus on the real once in a lifetime type of stuff that you can't necessarily get just like from a class online. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. let's get together in person and like really be creative together and, and work through our processes together live. Whereas, you know, a, a class that's a little bit more like theory of photography or maybe composition or things like that. People can, that are at different levels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes too. So yeah, be- making it a bit more of a personal experience. One of the things that I really love is when people are out shooting and they have this vision in their mind of this thing that they want to create when they're mm-hmm. shooting. And then they go to edit the images and they sit down and they look through all their images and they're like, oh, I didn't get it. I didn't get what I wanted. And I love coming in and saying, well, no, you did get what you wanted. You just have to do this to the image to make it like to fulfill Mm -hmm. that vision that you had and sitting with them and actually crafting it with them and going through lots of different editing techniques and actually making it into like fulfilling their vision that they had and then presenting that at the image review and just blowing everyone away with it like that i think there were so many light bulb moments within that process it's like a complete process you know start to finish yeah. shooting to edit edit um with the shooting in mind so yeah i think that worked really well yeah um the we have on the website petphotographyretreats.com you guys can see our schedule and what Charlotte's kind of referring to, which we're taking suggestions for names. Um, right now it's group focus work. It does not Ooh. even begin to like cover what that is. <laughs> what did Apple call Naming it? Um, yeah, it wait. Personal, personal projects. Personal projects. Personal yeah. projects. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're but not that's not that right Don't sue us. It's fine. Yes, don't sue. Yeah. Don't sue. So we need like a Barka, Barka break, Barka. I'm, listen, I'm, wor- I'm workshopping this. You know who I'm yeah. going to ask? My mom. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely ask her. Yeah. She'll just come out with it straight away and it'll be perfect. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's her simple, simple brain. <laughs> so yeah, so Kaylee, explain like what we took this inspiration from, which is the personal project time from Apple. And we're like, oh my God, this is what we need to add into the week to like really just help people exactly where they are and get like the biggest transformation and help find those light bulb moments and, and, you know, just see what they're working on. And yeah. yeah. I think also, the, the, my fe- sorry. Oh, go, <laughs> no, on. you go, you go. Sorry, I was going to say like, it, it basically closes the circle. Like it, it basically yeah. does the whole process from start to finish. And that was, I think the gap. And this is, this is yeah. filling the gap. This is actually that, you know, the creative, a really important part of the creative process with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. I totally agree. Yeah, Sam and I used to work, my fiance Sam and I both used to work for Apple before we started on this whole wild dog photography adventure. And uh, there was, um, Sam was what they, what they call a creative, which was a, a certain role at Apple, which is basically like a fancy word for a teacher, essentially. He was like instructing people on how to use different pieces of software that Apple makes. Um, and there was one sort of session that they held every day called personal projects, which is basically you sit around a computer, uh, sorry, you sit around a table and everybody's got their own things that they're working on, like on their computer and, you know, some people might be, you know, um, editing a photo or making a movie or trying to, um, you know, figure out how to do a podcast or whatever. And, uh, learning how to open email. Yeah, you got it. Exactly. You got all the whole range. I mean, this is right. This is that Apple. like my so. mom. They're like, how do I log in? What? Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, what do you mean password? Password? What's a Wi-Fi? <laughs> so what's a Wi-Fi? You got the Googles on that machine? <laughs> um, so basically the, the instructor would go around the table and, and check in with everybody and help them with little, you know, parts of, of their creative process or whatever they were working on. And it was a huge hit at Apple. So we kind of took a little bit of inspiration from that and how successful that that was for Apple and said, you know what? We should really do this at the Barkas. Like, let's pe- let people 
bring up their images and really pull up their shoots and unload their memory cards like real time and let's like help them. And, you know, because there are, um, you know, three instructors and then also, you know, Sam is there to, to help as well. You, there's at least four of us kind of walking around, checking in with with mm-hmm. everybody just making sure you know you're you're you know if you need help with a oh you're trying to make a selection and you have to you need help with the refine edge tool because you're trying to select a dog with long hair or something yeah. like that we're helping you with these little steps and or even just you're like i i don't know what to do with this <laughs> like help yeah, you know right. yeah exactly. even from the beginning i know i sat down and did some pricing and marketing stuff with people which is you know my big zone of genius so it was it was awesome Loved it. Yeah. And I think like yeah. one-on-one attention, probably like what, like what could, could we consider like website reviews? Maybe yeah, yeah. like if someone has, Hey, I want you to take a look at my you know, Absolutely. website. Like, yeah. I did that bit. for Carol. I looked over Carol's website for her. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like just more one-on-one kind of personalized experience with each instructor. So we're, we're going to, we're kind of, um, uh, What's the word? We're we're growing a little bit with this whole experience mm-hmm. and, and changing it up slightly on how we're going to offer, you know, the curriculum, I guess, if you will, yeah. sort of part of things, which I'm really excited about. I think we're bringing it into the future. That's right. That's right. Yeah, because we have so many people, too, that, um, you know, come and love the experience and come back for future ones. So we're like, I don't want to make you sit through the same content that you saw mm-hmm. before. But right. then exactly. there's new people that were like, oh, man, but this is important for you to know. Right. So super excited about being able to kind of bring these together so that if you're new to the Barca brand that, you know, we have all this, this kind of prerequisite stuff that you can go through and make sure you're like, Oh man, yeah, I'm on this page uh, on the same page. So we're all coming in on this baseline and then can just like support you wherever you are. Ah, so rewarding. And can I, can I just ask, like, would you be able to list out, like, what will you learn? Like, say say this would be somebody brand new to a barca, say, say like a week one. Yeah. Um, you know, someone coming in for the first time having this first amazing barca experience. Like, what could they expect to learn? Well, I think we need to finalize what we were talking. Session tips, working with natural light, like settings, like the best settings for pet photography, lens choices, things like that. Um, like a pricing basics, a business basics. Like, really just like, the the 101 type stuff for all the different pieces that are just so critical for creating the images and starting your business. I love it. And then yeah. so much completely invaluable hands-on actual shooting time with all of us. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So maybe arguably the most fun part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and yeah. the tobogganing in the down food. the hill like Mario Kart. And the food. <laughs> yeah. And the food, definitely. Oh, yeah, the food. And the food. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need to figure out what activities we're going to do in Spain because, again, like I said, we did five days of classroom. Yeah, and, we didn't do activities last time. Yeah, we did five days of classroom, and I think we only had like a two night break in between, which, I mean, we all love teaching these. But to be totally on 27, 24 seven for five days and then turn around like after barely catching up on your sleep. It's like, whoa. Mm. Um, Yeah. So we didn't have time to like explore much of anything. So we have to figure out what we're going to do. I know. I hope this time for our our midweek break, maybe we can go. That's our Grada Familia. Oh, my God. That's the most beautiful building ever. Yeah, that was pretty remarkable. How fun would it be to go with like the, you know, the attendees, like the photographers to go into oh, Barcelona and go to uh-huh. the Sagrada Familia and then go get like dinner. Yeah. That could be amazing. I mean, we're going to have to look into what the different options are, but you can expect some sort of epic fun like that, I, yep. I think. Yeah. You know, whether... No, that would be super fun. That was the only be- one of the few buildings that me, Heartless Nicole, I mean, I'm comparing myself to Kaylee, <laughs> who's crying like they love in rainbows. That's right. Um, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to get me passed over the edge. But Sagrada Familia did it. I walked in there. I was like, I guess so. so oh my beautiful. gosh, I must be colors. massively heartless then. <laughs> Wait, there were too many Charlotte, you didn't cry at the Sagrada no, Familia? There were too many people uh, in there. Get out! Of town. No, it's the introvert. Like can't can't show can't show emotion. Not safe no. place. <laughs> I was there by myself. Maybe maybe if I was there by yeah. myself. But there was too many people. But yeah, it was it was epic. It was amazing. And there's it's not just that. There's so much other amazing architecture in and around oh, um, Barcelona yeah. as well, and really awesome places to eat and yeah, just hang out. So we definitely need to do an excursion. Um, yeah, make that an option. 
Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and we'll have to find something for the thrill seekers as well. We'll see if we can find yeah. something like it's more fun AT. to do. Maybe, maybe yeah. not like tobogganing ATV kind of fun, but yeah, we'll see what we can come up with. <laughs> uh, we'll take a boat over to Ibiza and we go to a rave. Hey, there we go. That That's sounds it. good to me. I like, come back in at like eight in the morning, like, okay, I'm ready for my day. That's it. You've, All night. You've hit our target market right there. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Charlotte and I are the ones who are like, man, well, Charlotte and I are the morning help, and Kaylee is like yep. the nighttime. The nighttime. Yes, yep, uh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I all roll up to breakfast. Company. I ro- usually I roll up to breakfast with 10 minutes to spare. Grab a... Uh, I don't even I mean, know about 10 mean, minutes. That's yeah, being pretty generous. Being really generous. <laughs> I, would, I would say like sometimes you're on time to breakfast. Like, yeah. No, I meant 10 minutes left in the breakfast hour. Like 50, no, oh, no. No, five zero minutes late. Or like 55 minutes late to breakfast. And then I'd have five minutes to go home no, and then run downstairs. No, I think it's usually like that. Or breakfast is cleaned up and Sam or the chef <laughs> shaved you a plate. Yeah. Usually. Usually I eat the plate while I'm getting ready. Yeah. Like Sam will just bring it to my room because I just can't. I hate the yeah. mornings, guys, by the way. Oh, I'm not a yeah. morning gal. Okay. At least we oh. are, Nicole. At least we're into the mornings. We usually yeah. up yeah. fast out of yeah. everyone. Yeah, Don't for sure. I crash, it, I crash you- at night. <laughs> Uh, no, I, yeah, can't, exactly. I can't like, do anything. After dinner and I've got food in my belly, I'm just like, okay, that's it. I'm done. Yeah, so Kaylee's so I, I can go back and forth a little. So I can like hang out at night, like, oh, it's hot tub. I can stay up till 11. Yeah, if there's yeah. a hot tub, you're definitely into evenings. Yes. I will yeah, say. Yeah. yeah I don't even think that does went, did, Charlotte, did you go in the hot tub in Scotland? I didn't. Um, I didn't. I don't know why. I just, I've got a hot yeah, tub at home. She went to the lock instead. Her priorities <laughs> yeah. are I went, for the, I went for the cold therapy rather than the, the spa <laughs> yeah, therapy. I guess so. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that that worked for me. Crazy Australians. Yep. Mm. Nutty. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right. We should probably wrap this up. Thanks, guys, for coming along on our adventure and letting us reminisce all the fun times and all of our Barca alumni. Hopefully, you guys got to reminisce along with us as we went yes. through. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and we do have a few spots left for Barcelona, October. Oh, my gosh. I should have looked up the dates before. Here we go. I got if it. If it makes you feel any better, I have it? no idea when it is either. I got it. I got it. October <laughs> 5th through 9th and October 14th through 18th. We still have a, a couple on each spot, um, each side. And um, yeah, private room or shared room because this house is so massive that we are not really limited on either. So uh, yeah, yeah, whatever room preference you want. Just Did you mention available. that they have now like renovated more rooms and created more rooms in I this I think place? we just mentioned really quickly yeah there was we yeah. were there last time um jane the owner was taking us around the property and there was a section in the back of the property that was just like straight up was ruins a which is spooky section yeah that was which most of the house was when she bought it was like straight up ruins yeah. um other than i think the main house like because the dining room is the like the buffet and the dining rooms like the tr- legitimate used to be the barn it's the animal feeding trough yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the coolest bad. thing ever I, it's, I mean, it's there's not actually movie. green and hay on it anymore. It's been no. lacquered and clean, yeah. but it's so <laughs> cool. It's so cool. So yeah, so she had like this back part of the house that was, it was rubble. It was a pile of rubble. Yeah, pretty much. Was, that, that was like maybe and there was lots of random stuff in there too. There was all this yeah. random bits of furniture and farm equipment and stuff. It was spooky. We went exploring in there, but now yeah. that's all been like, turned oh. into the most beautiful, pristine, like. Gorgeous, gorgeous luxurious bedrooms yeah, yeah it's five been new gorgeous renovated. bedrooms all on suite and crazy looks beautiful i mean this is a house when we go and we're like where are we going to stay and i'm like i don't know can i move mm. every night because they're all amazing <laughs> <laughs> we want to experience it all yes that's a lot of work though Mm. Sam will, per- per- will forbid Kaylee from moving. <laughs> he hates when I pick a room and then I want to change it for the second week so I can try all the rooms. He hates that. He gets really mad. He just wants to settle. I just want to settle. That's Sam. That's Sam. I when understand. I, I understand. Sam, I call him Mad Sam. Mad Mad no. Sam. He always has a mad face on. No. <laughs> never. Sam could never be mad. Never. I know. Sam's the best. <laughs> but yes, you guys, come adventure with us and also learn how to tell dogs 
to sit in Spanish. Oh, yes. So to oh, yeah. Try and learn all the commands. I, I uh-huh. did and I've completely forgotten them. Uh-huh. Now I have to learn them all over again. Yeah. Because I have like terrible ear for languages. Yeah. <laughs> People are going to be listening to this and speak Spanish and be like, nice try, Nicole. No, just like, no. <laughs> no I, I'll stop trying. We'll look that up. <laughs> You're an embarrassment. I, I think it's know, better I not know. to even try sometimes, so I just don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Oh, all right. Well, thanks, Ooh. ladies, for joining me on this little um, bark a throwback adventure. Thanks for having me. Um, cool. It was a pleasure. It was so so fun you guys know where to find us all the details are at petphotographyretreats.com so go check it out come and join us October 5th through 9th October 14th through 18th uh, 35 minutes south of Barcelona so just fly into Barcelona you just have to get yourself to the house we can help you arrange transportation but then once you're there you are like 100% taken care of every single meal all the activities this year we used to have like a meal on our own and an activity was on your own. Like this year, it's like, no, let's just roll it all in. So it is seriously one price includes it all. So you just have to get to the house and then we will take care of you very well. You will not go hungry. That's for sure. <laughs> that yeah. is for sure. Yeah. You, and you, you will may... be exhausted in the best way. Yeah. We're not going to be responsible for you actually like putting on weight while you're there because seriously, oh, like, yes, no. we get so yeah. much food and, you know, desserts <laughs> and stuff. Crazy. Yes. Oh my gosh. So good. And oh. Nicole will lick the plate. So watch out. <laughs> I know. I've got to figure out where the heck that was that we ate because I need to go back there. I know it was like in this little alley. I wouldn't have to like look on Google Maps and try to figure out which alley because I can remember. I can see the outside. It was like this random little alley because the main part of Sitch is no cars. It's just pedestrian. And it was like this little just door with like this little window. <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember that. Yeah. Yes. And it was like, going back back just so you can lick the plate again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm going to go like every day because it was so good. Oh my <laughs> God. It. Oh, all right. Good to see you guys. Everybody yeah, else. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. See everybody. you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the hair of the dog podcast. This was episode number 150. If you want to check out the show notes for access to any of the resources that we mentioned, simply go to www.hairofthedogacademy.com slash 150. Thanks for listening to this episode of Hair of the Dog podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please take a minute to leave a review. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming episodes. One last thing. If you are ready to dive into more resources, head over to our website, at www.hairofthedogacademy.com. Thanks for being a part of this pet photography community.